Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Outside of the Box. Um, I always say I'm excited, but I mean, I'm really excited because um, we've got my favorite rookie team from last season, Glitch. Um, so we've got Kyle and Anthony. Welcome to the show today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Yeah, Absolutely. thanks so much. Um, so Glitch very exciting robot i mean at this point you have a hundred percent win percentage in battle bots and you can't do any better than that it's better than bite force and so like better than bite force is is pretty amazing um <laughs> you know uh, last season obviously it was a really good season for you um you know definitely had its ups and downs and we'll kind of talk about um the matches and kind of um you know what what occurred during the the tournament portion of things and you know what things look like in the future um which i'm sure is is really exciting you know for for you guys you you have to keep the streak going <laughs> um so getting right into uh, the beginning of last season the first match was against ghost raptor and so one thing i wanted to ask about you know i thought it was really interesting um in the like pre-match stuff they had mentioned that chuck pitzer of ghost raptor actually helped you guys before that match to make sure that you could do the match um which is just another amazing example of how everybody in BattleBots helps each other, even if you are going up against them. Um, so, you know, kind of tell me what that was like, especially as a rookie team to have a veteran like Chuck just jumping in and being like, I'm going to help you out, even though you were going against me. Uh, I guess I'll go. Uh, yeah, Chuck is, Chuck is awesome. Uh, he, he hasn't just helped us with that match and during the match he's like helped us afterwards like with finding sponsors and uh that sort of stuff so it's just incredible guy uh before the match it was just like he came over like to see, to see how we were doing uh and we were really struggling with getting a screw out of our frame so we had this problem where all of our armor was mounted with like 10 different screws that were they were directly bolted into the frame and those threads were getting busted. And so basically every time we had to put on the armor, which was every single match, because in order to put on the arm, in order to take off our top plate, we have to take on and off our armor. Every single time a bolt got stuck. And so we'd have to like do some drilling or cutting to, to get it off. Uh, and so he came in with like a specialized extractor called a, a specialized tool called a screw extractor and just went out, went at the bolt, just no hesitation helping us. That, that is very awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he did that for sure. Um, now one thing that I want to note too, that before that match, and I, like, I'm telling you, this is probably the highest compliment that I can pay that when that match started and the weapon fired up, it gave me the same feeling that it did the first time I saw Minotaur and <laughs> Minotaur is my favorite robot, like from day one, my favorite robot. So like, I was like, Whoa, it, it and like before even anything happened, um, and that was a really interesting match because there were a couple of times where it looked like it ghost raptor was was you know doing well and might win that match um and you kept coming back um you know it ended up getting the judge's decision at the end what do you think you know you did in that match to kind of enable you to get that win anthony well i definitely don't think that we could have won without getting help from Chuck, because he definitely did uh, help get us unstuck, I think, if I recall, like maybe twice. We were stuck against the arena wall and he kind of nudged us off. But I think like what got us the win ultimately was uh, at the very end, for some reason, our bot started actually responding to the inputs, the controller inputs, and we were able to kind of chase him down and like show aggression and do like a little bit of damage um to like the bottom side of his lifter 
um, like scraping that up. So I think that showed the judges that we have potential and aren't like going to, you know, we just have to work through our drive problems and um, we might be able to be a competitive bot if that gets, fix, gets fixed, yeah. Yeah, and I think, yeah, the scoring is just so heavily focused on damage that like we showed enough aggression that it wouldn't be 3-0 and showed enough control that it wouldn't be 3-0 because like at the end we were able to chase Ghost Raptor and then damages everything else. So I think that really turned the tide. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was... I wouldn't say that it was necessarily like a really super convincing first win, but a win is a win. And that's the way that you want to start, um, especially in your first match. So um, I thought that that kind of really got you going on your way. Um, I, and I mean, you seemed excited, you know, maybe a little bit stunned by it, um, but, you know, still really, really great all the same. Um, it, and it didn't get any easier for you from there um, because the next match was against Hydra, which, you know, at, at that point, Hydra was one and one. So, you, you know, you didn't know how that season was going to go for Jake Ewart, but in the prior season, Hydra was the number one seed. So it, it I mean, that, that had to be at least somewhat intimidating uh, because that, I mean, that flipper is just, you know, so crazy and it's, it's so hard to get underneath Hydra to avoid being flipped, which is, uh, you know, ideally what you want to do. You did get flipped, but then it seemed like he started having some, some issues um, and you were able to, you know, kind of capitalize on that. Yeah. So there, there's a story behind this one. Uh, kind of, we delayed our Ghost Raptor fight like kind of as late as possible, uh, just getting which ready at the very beginning. And so that was on the, the, the way it was set on Friday. The, the fight nights, it was Friday. Ghost Raptor was Friday, I believe. I, I could be wrong, and it could have been Saturday. And then I believe we didn't have a match Saturday. And then they scheduled Hydra and it, it could have been Saturday or Sunday. I'm, I'm blanking right now, but they scheduled Hydra and Kraken for the same session. So the same four hour block of filming. Uh, and before that night, we were like, okay, the robot's finally working. Uh, maybe we'll hang out with some other teams. And then we, we got the, <laughs> we got the, schedule for the next day and it's like nope we, we aren't we're going to bed and we're waking up as soon as possible and so yeah we were we were very scared uh i remember like we went out in the hallway and there was like another team and they were like you're so screwed and we were like we're so screwed <laughs> uh yeah i think we thought it was a feeder oh it was a feeder and like every yeah, Hydra was definitely way above our level. But but you won. You won via knockout. So I think if we were to repeat that fight 10 times, I think nine out of 10 times, we'd get our butts thrown in the air. <laughs> yeah. So I, there's a lot of luck that plays into it. Um, especially, um, I remember that they rushed towards us and got stuff on the floor. Uh, and that prevented them from throwing us again. And honestly, if they had thrown us again, we, we might have like been disabled completely. So that on top of also the first time they threw us, our forks absorbed a lot of the energy because we landed on them. So that's another like point of really good luck. And just the third point of good luck is that we managed to run into them while they're like flipping upside down. So it's like so much luck is involved uh, in these fights. and. Yeah, I, I think that we got really lucky that fight. But it's still a win. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, not to say that I'm not proud. Like yeah. I'm very, very proud of like that win. It's definitely something I'll remember forever. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it like 
you know, for sure, there's things in a match that, you know, just happen to go your way. Um, but at the same time, like, you know, not discount, like Glitch is an amazing robot. And, you know, sometimes if maybe if, if it's not as good, you don't get those bounces or, you know, things like that, that, that do go your way. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that was, that was a really um, big win for you guys. Um, and that, that kind of led into the third fight with Kraken, which is a really interesting one, um, you know, because Kraken, you know, doesn't have the big destructive, you know, spinner or flipper, you know, things that normally you think of as, as being destructive. However, Glitch is perfectly Kraken sized to be a sandwich. Um, and I think that that is what Matt Spurk was thinking before the match. He seemed really confident, um, you know, about his ability to, to kind of do something. Um, your team seemed to think that it would go the full three minutes and it didn't, um, <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, took it to them, managed to get them on the upper deck. And after that, it was it was kind of all glitch at that point. So, you know, kind of talk about what what that match went like. Yeah, so we definitely thought that we were perfectly cracking size too. And because of the drive being questionable, we definitely thought that they would be able to get a get a grab. Uh, and so we, we added a second layer of top armor on. We like customize that took a little long doing that sorry <laughs> sorry to that uh, but yeah i guess we didn't end up needing it luckily uh our, our top armor was pretty thin so i could have been a completely different way if we were able to get a, a grab but i don't know yeah, I don't even know how useful like a, another layer would be. <laughs> it's just like would probably go straight through both. But it was like funny seeing like spaced armor on the top of our bot. It's like, interesting. But um, yeah, I think I was I was a lot more happy with how the drive system handled that match. Um, I feel like we were able to avoid them a lot better than we were with Hydra and with Ghost Raptor, and seeing like our bot actually like run in circles and um, kind of strafe out of the way when Kraken was trying to attack us was really like super satisfying. Like all of our hard work is paying off. Um, I think also like our, the weapons operator Roy, he like pointed out when Kraken like accelerates forward, their like jaw kind of tips up off the ground. So we're able to let them come to us. And so we changed our strategy, be a lot more passive and to allow that to happen for, for us to like utilize uh, our force and like get under them and, and send them flying. So, yeah. So finish the season three and oh, um, and you know, I'll tell you that of course, mm -hmm. once everything was wrapped up and it was announced, you know, who the, the different seeds were in the tournament, I, I honestly thought for certain that either Glitch or Minotaur was going to win the whole thing. <laughs> like that 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 was my my belief um you know that's not what ended up happening but i'm kind of curious so to talk a little bit about what what all happened exactly that led to you not being able to participate in the tournament and then also if you had been able to do that what was your strategy going to be against witch doctor so uh, I guess we'll see how convoluted I get with this. Our strategy, I would say, was kind of the reason why we made the decisions we did that ended up causing us not to be able to fight uh, was that we saw them putting on forks for the first time I think they were ever going to use forks. And so we knew if they get to our sides, if they get to our back, uh, we're pretty much done. And at that point, we we did we like messed up our weapon speed, so we were running at 130 miles per hour instead of the, the tip speed limit is around 250. Uh, and so I'm pretty sure that's a slower RPM than they run at, uh, and they have a similar diameter weapon. So we were thinking we have to win a head-on-head -head collision. 
And to do that, we needed a faster weapon. And so because we messed up kind of the, the gear ratio beforehand, we had the hospital machining larger pulleys. So we would have a faster weapon. And so we had two robots. One wasn't completely done. Uh, and we had to make a decision of, do we rush the robot that has the faster weapon uh, by taking parts off the working robot uh, to try to win those head-on-head -head collisions, or do we wait for another match? Uh, and we decided to go with the, the faster weapon robot, and obviously that did not work out well. Uh, just with the larger speed, we just didn't have enough torque to spin up the weapon, uh, and also because we weren't using encoders like we wanted to. Uh, so it's kind of a, we, we might've been able to run that speed if, if, we, if we had those like working beforehand, but just how things played out with having enough time to build the robot with our frame coming in late, uh, it was just, it didn't happen. Yeah. Not enough people to, uh, work on that either. We were all kind of just focused on getting the robot built and working. And yeah, we weren't able to uh, implement like encoder controls into our, uh, yeah, into our uh, ESPs or yeah. like, or ESCs. Like we didn't need it until we needed it. And then it yeah. was too late. Yeah, that is that is really unfortunate um, and, and, you know, disappointing that that happened, obviously. Um, but I think uh, like everybody that I've talked to agrees in BattleBots that you learn from your mistakes, you know, whether they be in a match or otherwise. And that really tends to, to help things along in the future. Um, so, you know, talking about the future, is there anything that you took from that first season that you know you plan to move forward with glitch to you know to avoid some of those things from happening. Mm -hmm. So, first thing is we kind of have a we have a small army right now of like thirty plus people, just because it's a school team. Uh, obviously, that that's like it's a completely different dynamic of normal teams of everyone's there. Uh, and they, they spend a lot more time right now over the summer. It's like, everyone's gone. What do we do? Uh, so completely, completely different situation, but it's been, it's been great. Uh, and then we've also been making a lot of technical upgrades. Anthony, do you want to talk about the drive? That's what he's been working on. Yeah. Like we definitely learned a lot, we made a lot of mistakes last season, uh, both in terms of design and in terms of like uh, the decision-making process during the competition. Uh, I made a lot of driving mistakes. I think tactically uh, I could have pulled back many times, but I was just like seeing red, I guess, and like trying to impress the judges as much as possible. So a lot of key takeaways from that, but um, yeah, as Kyle said, we, we are making a lot of technical improvements to the drive system. Uh, the, problem we hypothesize with the last year's robot is that we had four points of contact on the ground or four uh, points, which is the bottom points of the wheels and they're all rigidly attached to each other. And so if you have that on an uneven floor, there's always gonna be like at least one that's not touching the ground. Um, and so we needed some compliance or like some flexibility in our drive system such that when there is uneven ground, it kind of flexes and uh, pushes all four points of contact onto the floor. So we're implementing a suspension system um, in order to have these four wheels uh, be able to move relative to each other. And so uh, I don't know how in detail I should get for this, but essentially our drive pods are now, um, they're uh, pivoting off the back with the wheel on this side, such that the wheel can now move up and down relative to the to the frame itself. And so that should allow us to go over more bumps and maintain contact, at least, you know, for the most part uh, with the ground. Um, in addition to that, 
we're also like mounting uh yeah kyle should i i don't know if i should like the magnets you're good i I was gonna say you're being way too hard on yourself for the driving because there's like there were like six different issues that all could have crippled the drive themselves like with our speed control for the electrical side with our center of mass (laughs) our magnets getting stuck on things and like stuff getting underneath them and also them cracking and being weaker so our center of mass was not compensated for and yeah yeah (laughs) yeah it's a rough robot robot to drive i'm super excited to see how well these like improvements uh turn out and how much it improves our drive system uh but yeah i am i'm hesitant to be too hopeful because you know we haven't done physical testing yet and things theoretically should work but you, you, re- you really never know until you physically test well and like what's crazy about what you're saying is you know mentioning like all of these mistakes and things like that and you were three and oh in a season with all of these mistakes so how good can this robot be if you fix all of these things <laughs> Driving definitely would help it be better. <laughs> I mean, we'll we'll see. Um, yeah, like some of the some of the things that I wanted to ask too, especially like being a, a rookie team and coming into this, what's the biggest difference like being in battle boss compared to anything else? Like if you've ever done combat robotics at any other level you know like what are the biggest differences of kind of being on that level of a stage um it's just a lot harder to move the robot around (laughs) but we yeah we we brought the robot back to the hotel like the first weekend uh we brought it back uh and we, we kind of struggled with the entrance to the hotel door. <laughs> so it's like, it's a hotel that like a bunch of the teams were, were at. And so we, we had to like open the door and like have two people turn it vertically and like walk it through and like, oh, someone's coming, time to, time to wait, take another try. So yeah, that's definitely a thing. Uh, and then just, it's so much more impossible to test like the weapon safely. So there's a lot more uncertainty. Uh, we, we never ran it before the event, not because of testing safety, just because we literally didn't have it ready. But even if, even if we did, it's like, um, you can, you can't learn that much other than just breaking it behind out of sight and seeing what part broke. Uh, yeah. Another thing that I'm curious about is, you know, because at this point, you you know, you've had three matches, uh, you know, that we've that we've seen what, you know, of all the, the robots that are out there right now, are there any ones in particular that you would just really love to match up against and, you know, see what that what, how that would go? I would say Endgame, not not because of like the ooh, I want to take down Endgame, but like because like the boss awesome and would totally kick kick our kick our booties, and it would be amazing to see like how our frame can be completely warped and destroyed. <laughs> is, that, is that a decent answer, Anthony? Do you agree? Yeah, definitely. I think we yeah. need to take more punishment um, to see how, like, you know, test the failure points of our bot. We didn't really receive any direct, strong, intense hits to our frame. Um, the getting thrown in the air again, like the energy was absorbed by the fork, so couldn't really test our durability. I think, uh, you know, I mean, since we didn't get to fight at Witch Doctor, like, we definitely would love to fight them too. Um, yeah, maybe Shatter, like since they have a similar movement capabilities or much better movement capabilities, but like in theory the same, uh, that would be a really interesting match as well. Or Omnius or Omnius? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that would be- Ominous is, uh, I don't, 
they're like a new well we've seen some instagram videos of their movement and looks really cool like I, when we first pitched which to the like, greg like the autobots producer uh he just showed us the clip of ominous and we're like oops uh but yeah luckily luckily there's there's space for i guess two strafing vertical spinners so that would be a really awesome match to see if we're both able to drive just like circling around each other that would be so they have a huge advantage as in they only have three points of contact with the ground and that is like you don't have to design any suspension you're always gonna have three points of contact uh yeah <laughs> it's under or it's not over constrained like ours is I'm curious, what do you think about going up against a robot like Huge or Mammoth? Um, you know, I, I think both of them, you know, they've been around a while and they feel like, you know, a lot of the teams know how to fight them, but you've never fought either of them. So I'm kind of curious what you would think about that. We have a plan for Huge that I don't know if, I don't know if we're actually going to order the parts for just because like parts cost money. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, I'll, I'll just say, because it doesn't really matter. Of uh, uh, Our plan would be just lifting our weapon. So we have like the billet body frame, it's like one piece, but our weapon rails that hold the weapon are, we bolt those in. And so we could uh, theoretically just get versions of those that are tall enough so the weapon hits their frame and then i don't know i think that's that's their biggest weakness and they i know last year they like struggled because they they were up against robots that could hit the frame and like but if we can make our robot hit the frame when it normally wouldn't we'd be able to Tap into the well, now that you said that, maybe they'll put on bigger wheels if they face us. So. But then we can get bigger rails. <laughs> it's never ending. You you never you never know. It's funny because um like I, I, I was talking to you. I don't know if you're if you're familiar with uh the Voltergeist, who is also another like kind of newer team over in the UK who has a you know really great hammer bot and they're trying to get in and they were like, you know watching these videos it's helping us understand how we get in how how we would fight people <laughs> but i mean i i think you know being in the pits and you know kind of watching videos of each other fighting you already have at least some sense of that you know even if it's not your robot fighting them but you can see how the other teams approach a match more or less yeah, we definitely did a lot of studying watching previous uh, fights of Witch Doctor and uh, Hydra and Kraken and Ghost Raptor. Yeah. So that's a that's a normal thing that teams typically will will go and do that research and watch those videos before a match so that they you know kind of have some some idea of what they might need to do going into it. I, I imagine that is probably a commonly used tactic. Yeah. Yeah, and and the the builders like have access to the matches in the in the pits, so I think a, a lot of teams will just check what happened with the robot in the previous match because they could have changed something completely different from the year before, and so you're able to I guess get tuned in on to what those changes are, and if something broke, be targeted or just like. Are they moving? Are they moving a certain direction from the starting square, like every single match? Uh, just those things. Well, and I think that that's something that's really exciting about your team. Or I mean, you know, probably really any rookie team, but you know, Glitch in particular, um, because you you know were only able to have the the few matches that there's not a lot for any team to like used to scout at this point you know there's a, a very small sampling um and i think that really just anything that anybody gained from last season is that this is a team to watch with a really scary robot i, I mean you know for, to to me because I, I i've been you know i've been watching battle bots for a long time like since the 
the Comedy Central days. I've I've seen a lot of things, so um, it really is an impressive robot. And and I mean, I think all the teams agree with that. Thank you. Yeah, I think one of the things we say is that no one can predict how we're going to drive because we don't know how we're going to drive. <laughs> so luckily, luckily, people can't watch us and study how we're going to come off the starting square. Or I guess, unluckily, it would be nice if, <laughs> if we were consistent enough to have bad habits. It, it'll be a surprise for them, <laughs> you know, so um, that ought to, that ought to be really interesting. Um, but yeah, um, another thing that I was going to ask about too was just in general, like, I know you mentioned with the, um, the, the battle box and like being able to get around, you know, you would never had like a season two experience before they've made some of the changes with the, you know, the upper deck and, and things like that. So you don't really have that baseline to compare it to from before. Um, but is it something that, that you like, I mean, obviously in the, in the Kraken match, you were able to use it to your advantage, but do you think that it, it's a, a good thing to have, or, you know, do you have other ideas about ways that it could be modified differently that would be you know more exciting or or you know things like that yeah well i definitely think that when it works it's really advantageous to be able to move sideways and point your weapon towards the enemy um but it's just like i think they're with a lot of the other bots that drive really well there's like no ceiling to like the amount of skill that you can put into it um and you get like really really good drivers like maddie vasquez, vasquez and uh you know uh sablaze <laughs> so sorry jameson, jameson go jameson yeah go. yeah like they their skill ceiling with their bot is like really high because they're able to you know it has very uh, fundamentally good good fundamentals um but with our bot like the fundamentals are bad uh, they aren't like well implemented just straight up like so um, there's a disadvantage there because you're like kind of really capped as, as to what you can do as a driver um, but I'm I am excited for us to like uh, next year implement those those uh, drive systems better and be able to actually uh, show some level of like competency in driving people probably think that it's like oh wow that driver is horrible because like their <laughs> bots are not moving <laughs> it's like well no, I'm actually full sticking it and it's like not doing anything that I'm telling you. We missed the, the upper deck, Anthony. The upper deck. Oh, then you yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I guess I'll answer that then. So, yeah. upper deck. I think it, it's probably advantageous to us as a vertical spinner. Just things can bump into us and then they go onto the deck. Uh, and probably not being able to drive well that helps because then there's there's less <laughs> there's less area where you can drive and so we have to worry about being in the wrong place less. Uh, but I don't know. I didn't didn't feel like it significantly impacted our matches too much. Uh, I know a lot of people are upset about it, and I'm but. I guess I guess we haven't faced any horizontal spinners, so it was it was just kind of the same thing, but a reduced area. Uh, and I'd imagine it's a lot it's a lot different when you're a horizontal and now there's this extra surface area that you're you're running into. Uh, and I I like big explosions, so more more spin up time is probably better for the big explosions. Right, right. I am, I am also a fan of big explosions, um, and I think that, like, like you know, glitch has that 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 capability, that you know, that knockout explosive capability. Um, so, you know, who knows? Maybe, maybe next season there can there could be some some of that. Um, but yeah, no, um, you know, that, the the upper deck definitely. Um, the, the vertical spinners like it. Um, everybody else, maybe not so much. 
<laughs> so it, it just depends on the the design of the robot. Um, you know, definitely with other teams when I've talked to, um, you know, there's been a lot of different <laughs> suggestions, whether it be having ramps on the side so that you can actually drive up it and utilize, you know, that as a, another way to maybe get around the arena. Um, Mammoth wants there to be a cave. I mean, a, a cave could be could be kind of exciting, you know. That's 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 always a, a different kind of thing. But um, but yeah. So we'll we'll see what they do. Um, I'm sure that things will change for for next season. Um, because they always tend to try and um innovate and you know do things that are are different and surprising. So I it'll think, be interesting yeah, I think, to see. I think mixing it up would be really cool. Um, just each season have a different slightly modified arena it just you just gotta have notice to the teams that this is what the arena is going to be this year uh so people know coming into it i feel like i feel like that's a that was a big a big sore spot for a lot of the, the horizontals of they they built the robot and then the arena changed so they could have they could have potentially changed something of like making the diameter smaller i know now a switch to their back to the old robot that had a smaller diameter. Uh, and so if you design for a different arena and then it's a and it's surprised and it, it doesn't make people happy. Uh, but that's yeah. not to say that like it, I think if there was plenty of notice, it would be like viewed a lot differently. Still probably wouldn't like it if you're a horizontal, but the like less of a less of a sore point and more of a how do how do we introduce this into our gameplay instead of okay now it's here yeah and that's a really interesting point because i i don't think that like fans maybe necessarily think about that but you really do have to design for the space that you're going to be having the matches in because that does affect you know what you're going to do when you can't you know necessarily plan for every possible opponent that you might have but you can at the very least plan for what the battle box is going to look like so it is pretty critical that you have ample time to adjust with you know with whatever might be happening yeah i totally answered the completely different question there so yeah <laughs> my bad <laughs> a lot of background stuff going on but yeah um i totally agree yeah definitely being able to plan for it is important um it does like there's a lot of limitations but i feel like that uh, most changes that like battlebots makes to the arena i feel like anything's going to be like controversial so there's always going to be people that are very vocal about it um and the people that support it might not like want to voice that opinion because now they're like, that's a controversial opinion. Yeah, I don't know. There's too many variables to consider when like changing the battle boss. They're like trying to make it as entertaining as possible. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very uh, open question. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, well, I, I, I'm guessing that, you know, given the timing from last season that, that we're all going to be finding out, you know, in the near future, what, what those things are going to look like, um, at least timing way wise, um, because I, I know typically it happens August, September, and we're, we're into mid July at this point. So, you know, it's, it's, it's got to happen soon. I, I would think, but, um, I, I'm definitely excited for this team for next season to see what, what you do and what you bring and if if we can you know kind of continue um where where things left off last season and continue that win streak <laughs> um is is there anything else that that you guys wanted to to add at all or you know any any other input go bears <laughs> go. <laughs> like go the bears. chicago bears the Berkeley Bears. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I, I I don't sport. Aside from robots, I don't I don't sport. So I, um, I, I don't think most people. We don't sport either. For our school, <laughs> I've been to the football games, and it's, there's like a quarter of the seats are full. 
Uh, awesome. we're, I think we're also very, very excited. I don't think anyone's more excited than we are <laughs> about our pot. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Sorry. Uh, yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing what improvements we can make for our bot. Yeah, I, I mean, for sure. I, and, and I like, I don't want to say that I think that no one has something like more to like prove or show than you guys. But when you set the bar that high, I, I think that there's, you know, that there's expectations. And, you know, I have every like belief that, that you'll be able to bring that to the table. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, we'll collect more data and see how we do. <laughs> We're extrapolating a lot. I, I'm, yeah, I'm really happy with how last season turned out too. The first three matches were really yep. exciting. Yep, absolutely. Um, well, we will go ahead and wrap it up. Um, but you know, we'll we'll see what things look like next season. And um, you know, for everybody that watches the show. Um, make sure that you subscribe, you know, comment, let, let me know that you're st still loving this content. Um, cause I know, you know, it's just been, been great being able to have all the builders and drivers on and talk about robots. So, um, we'll, we'll keep doing it, but thank you for joining and we'll see you next time on the show.